I'll give you the floor. Your uh, your response to all that is what? Well, uh, first of all, I would say I'm not uh, you know doubling down on anything. I would just simply say that right now we are picking at semantics regarding certain things that I reported in a story that was not a story about an, uh, an argument with Marvin Jones. That was one sentence in a much broader story about the environment uh, in Jacksonville. If you go back and you listen to Urban Meyer's uh, press conference on Sunday after the game, he actually confirms a great deal of what I had reported. Uh, he acknowledged that Marvin Jones was upset about uh, repeated criticism of the wide receiver group. He said that they had a conversation. I refer to it as an argument, which is how it was described to me. Uh, again, that's a, a semantic difference. You can ask my wife about that. <laughs> so we've uh, uh, disagreed on that before. Um, you know, the other detail that I had not seen Urban asked about was Marvin Jones not being in the facility at one point because he was so upset. Uh, that is absolutely accurate. Uh, you know, there's, of course, the benching of James Robinson and the details there where Urban has, um, you know, said it was injury related, then said it was he's not involved and it's the assistant coaches when, in fact, he was the one who ordered the benching and kept uh, James Robinson out of the game. It was only when Trevor Lawrence intervened that Robinson went back in. And then there's the uh, staff meeting, which Urban denies uh, calling his assistant coaches losers. Uh, again, we're into a semantic territory here because he also, again, noted immediately after that that he, yes, is very hard on coaches and very demanding. The message in the meeting, regardless of what he called and how he used certain words, the message of the meeting was he's a winner and the assistant coaches are losers. And he emphasized this in the meeting by going around the room, pointing at each coach and saying, have you won? And he did not mean that rhetorically. He wanted an answer, and guys had to uncomfortably defend themselves and their resumes. And, Rich, I can't tell you how many people within the league from every, you know, every different position, from head coaches to assistant coaches, front office people, other media members, have called me since then. And, and I ask all the, you know, the coaches in particular, is this normal? And everyone says, no, they've never heard of anything like that. But it's not about one argument or conversation. It's not about one staff meeting. It is about the way that that fits into the pattern in a pervasively negative environment that, quite frankly, is unlike anything that I've heard in my close to 20 years covering the NFL. Well, and that's something I mentioned on this show yesterday is how everybody talks. I've never been around uh, a, a group of people quite like football people who talk. Everybody talks. Everybody cheddar chatters and jibber jabbers or or jive turkeys or what have you to use the Harbaugh phrase, right, or gobble gobbles, quite like NFL people. And the thing that jumped out at me as well uh, 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 off, your, off of your piece from over the weekend that was just remarkable, I had to read it twice, to be honest with you, Tom, uh, was that Jaguar players unburdened themselves to Rams players in Los Angeles after losing to them. And that's the way players talk. I totally believe that. That That is something that happens all the time. So that's what you heard, that Jaguar players unburden themselves to Rams players like you have no idea what's going on around here, pretty much. Well, and in fact, too, yes, I, I was told that, and that was in the story that you know Jaguars players were basically telling Rams players the same thing that I've heard you know throughout the course of the offseason, which is Urban Meyer does not treat them like you know adults. In many cases, guys who have kids, have families, uh, he's still – kind of approaching them like their 19-year-old uh, college kids. And, in fact, you know, I also got many calls uh, over the weekend from agents of Jaguars players who all said, number one, everything in that story is accurate as far as players know, and number two, it's just scratching the surface. And, in fact, I had uh, one prominent agent tell me that the same thing happened after the Tennessee game, which was a Jaguars player came up to one of his players on the Titans and was saying, get me out of here. Now, you know, that happens with losing, okay? Let's, yes. let's you know, kind of level set here. Anytime that you're 2-11, and 11, there's going to be some, you know, casting blame, and there's going to be some griping and complaining, and everybody just, you know, wants the season to be over. One of the things that is unique in Jacksonville is Urban Meyer, when he speaks publicly, often is casting blame on whether it's the players or his assistant coaches, 
Um, and that's not going over well. That's one of the things that you know, was upsetting for Marvin Jones has been upsetting for other players is they feel like they're getting blamed and aired out publicly when there's you know, quite clearly some institutional things that are not – uh, not in line with what people expect a, an NFL program to be. Tom Pelissaro here on the Rich Eisen Show. And the other, I guess, outlier or difference, because you're right. I mean, when teams are 2-11, and 11, players are always saying, get me out of here, this is terrible. U-Haul, you know, Dion taught me that phrase years and years and years ago that the U-Hauls backed up, that players are done. They essentially want to get out, and they're ready to back the U-Haul up and go home. And the Jaguars are playing U-Haul games right now. And the pro- the difference is also is – a coach with uh, an absolute sterling uh, winning record, right, coming in, and I say that just in terms of wins and losses. We know that there's always been uh, baggage of note regarding Urban Meyer uh, at his college stops. But, I mean, there's no question this guy is a winner. The guy puts W's on the board and hangs banners and beats alma maters like mine, you know, repeatedly. So he's not used to it. We're not used to talking about him this way. And then, of course, there's this sense of the Jaguars saying, how, how is he not that guy still? So what's the next steps here in that regard, Tom? What's happening there right now? Well, Jaguars owner Shad Khan uh, addressed the coaching staff yesterday, uh, told them to tighten up, no more leaks. Um, the fact that I'm telling you that happened would indicate that <laughs> those efforts may not be entirely successful. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, he yes. also spoke to uh, reporters, uh, I believe on his yacht last night, uh, celebrating his 10-year anniversary as the uh, Jaguars owner. Uh, and if Today. you read the quotes, yeah. some of which are, are on NFL.com right now, uh, it's certainly not a strong endorsement. It's very much they're going to evaluate things. They're not used to having drama uh, surrounding the Jaguars. In fact, Shad made a – and Shad is somebody who I you know, have a great deal of respect for, one of the great you know, success stories and how he came up making his fortune in the, the car bumper business, you know, truly self-made and so impressive in, in many ways. Um, you know, but he was, he was joking about the fact that normally it's just, well, the lowly Jaguars, they're bad, and everybody leaves us alone. Whereas this, in this case, people, there's a, a heightened focus, and there is drama, which is something that they're not accustomed to. Uh, one quote also that jumped out at me was he said, this roster is much better than winning two games, which is a, a pretty clear indication that he believes they should not be 2-11 and 11 right now. And if the roster is not the problem, uh, that infers that coaching – um, must be at least a part of the issue uh, that they have right now. So you know, I, I would entirely expect that there's going to be a thorough evaluation of everything going on. Um, you know, again, based on Shad's background and his history in the NFL, he is he is inclined to give people time. Gus Bradley got into a fourth season um, despite all the losing that they did with a young rebuilding team. Doug Marone was around for four full seasons. Um, obviously had the one run to the AFC championship game. And then, but you know, the overall record was not great. But they would, you know, exercise patience there. The question that that Shad Khan and the people advising him have to answer is, can it get better with Urban Meyer as the head coach? Because one of the challenges that they're going to have is they've already had significant staff turnover going back to the off season when uh, his handpicked strength and conditioning coach resigned after some racial comments from uh, his days at Iowa resurfaced. His special teams coordinator um, had to take a leave of absence, did not return. His chief of staff just left for the University of Texas. There's a report that his tight ends coach is taking another job. I am personally aware of multiple assistants who are actively looking for other jobs because under no circumstances do they want to return. Are you going to be able to get good coaches to come down there? Are there people who trust Urban Meyer enough to go in and fill those roles? You know, and there's also – Agents who say, you know, it's going to be hard. They're not going to be able to get free agents. Uh, money and no state income tax generally can fix yes. at least some of that. Right. But in terms of program building, just with the environment that, that's created there, um, they're, they're going to have some challenges, and they've got to figure out, and Shad's got to make a determination. Can Urban Meyer be the guy to fix it? Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.